20 survival foods that can last up to 20 years. What an amazing thing. Has anybody out there checked into any of these things? Welcome back to Survival Preparedness for Beginners. And on today's video, we are going to be talking about 20 survival foods that can last for 20 years. In no particular order, of course. We have no favorites, if you know what I mean. But let's cover a few facts first. Back in May, the chief economist at the World Food Program for the United Nations stated that at that point there was 135 million people already facing acute food shortages. But now with Charlie Victor 19 in the picture, 130 million more could go hungry in 2020. Now we all seen all the long lines of people waiting at all the food banks to get food in America. That's right, in America. Something we're not used to seeing, is it? Right on our own home turf. It's quite sad, but at least there are people out there and organizations that are doing the best they can do to supply these families that have no fault of their own, have lost their own jobs, out of work, no money coming in, and definitely no help from the government to help get them food for them and their families because they weren't prepared. The whole key is preparedness, folks. That's why I'm doing the video I'm doing today for long-term preparedness. In the short term, there's a lot of things you can do. You can go in and check out a lot of my videos. I cover it all. Now, what does it mean to be, you know, how can we be prepared for food shortages? Maybe if you're new to my channel, new to prepping, maybe you're asking yourself that question. Basically, really, prepare for, for any type and survive any type of a food shortage. You must basically identify the potential risks in your own area, depending on where you live. If you live in a big city, you have different risks. If you live in the rural America, you have different risks. Everybody has a risk factor. You have to take an inventory of your current resources, your food, water, emergency supplies, all that different types of stuff, all goes into planning ahead. You have to develop and execute a plan of storage for your food, water, and emergency supplies. Have anybody out there ever grown your own garden? Even if you live in a small area or something, you know you can still do it in planter pots. This way here, you can grow some fresh stuff, veggies, lettuce, things of that nature. You can do it indoors. You can do it outdoors even if you had just a little patio. So now let's get right into some of the top 20 survival foods that can last for up to 20 years or longer. We're gonna start off with number one. Like I said, these are in no particular order. So here we go. Powdered milk. You know, unless you got a cow in your backyard, if something happens and there's a food shortage or crisis or anything of that nature, powdered milk is the way to go. If you store powdered milk correctly, especially if it's non-fat, 
it'll last 20 years or more. Now also do know if you add into when you're making your powdered milk a little bit of sugar, it actually makes it a little bit better and easier to drink if you're not quite used to powdered milk. Number two, dried beans. You can pick these up just about anywhere. They're still available. Don't wait, because there may come a time when they're not. But dried beans, you know, you can store those. I've done several videos. But if you store them in the proper area, they'll last 30 years or more. That's a great one to have. Another one is number three, instant beans. Now, instant beans are more of your um, refried beans and things of that nature. And if you do store them properly, make sure that the cans and or bags do not get damaged. They will last 20 years to 25 years with no problem. Number four on the old list here, salt. Now salt has so many different types of things that it can do besides just flavoring your food, folks. You can preserve food with salt. Canning, you need salt. There's so many different things that salt will do. It's just amazing. Maybe I'll have to do a video just on salt and everything that it can do just so that you all know. Number five, honey. Now we all know honey has been found in the pyramids, thousands of years old, and they deem it still safe to eat. So honey is one of those ones where it just never goes bad. Number six, Freeze-dried meats and vegetables or fruits, anything of that nature, freeze-dried. So if you had your mountain house meals, for instance, you know what? Those things last for 25, 30 years. You can also buy, you know, just a certain type of meat. Say if you wanted hamburger, chicken, that kind of way. You're same with your veggies and everything else. So then you could build your own meals. Freeze-dried cheese is number seven. No, we don't have any of that cheese whiz here. That's not going to last too long, folks. You got to get the freeze-dried cheese. And that there will last for 20 years or more. Number eight, oats. Now, you know, you, you got to figure. If it's a grid-down type situation, power's out whatever else if you have some way to heat up water you can always have oatmeal just saying folks something hot sticks to your bones if you know what i mean number nine dehydrated fruits and vegetables goes right along with the meats and everything else you can buy them in all different shapes sizes quantities however you want to do it number 10 we're halfway there folks Follow me. Number 10, everybody's favorite, pasta. Pasta of any kind. If you take and if you store that properly, will last for 30 years plus. No problems. Pasta is the number one. There you go. You know, especially if you're Italian. Number 11, wheat. Wheat is the main way to go. If you buy it already in like in bulk, you can grind it down and make your own flour. White flour has a shelf life of about 10 years. Now, if you store it in Marlar bags, I believe it'll last a lot longer than that as long as you store it in a cool, dry place. That's why I tell everybody to put it, once you package it, put it in a bucket, seal the bucket and store it in a closet or something. Not in your garage or anything like that. But if you just buy wheat that hasn't been ground yet, you know, that there will last between 20 and 30 years. Something to think about, folks. Number 12, cocoa powder. 
Now, cocoa powder could be used for a lot of different things. But then again, you, if you think about it, <clears throat> you just take and put that right into your powdered milk and you just made it a whole lot better. Number 13, potato flakes. Now, with potato flakes, you know, you can use those to, if you needed to, to say cook with, you can coat it. You know, you get like a, you know, if you only had water or milk you could use and then dip your meats and chickens or whatever into that and then put it into the potato flakes and get a little crunch or something on it. This way here you get a little bit of something different. You can also make potatoes with water. You don't necessarily need butter to survive, but yes, it is a lot better if you do have butter, so maybe you might want to look into getting some butter too. Number 14, people. Sugar. And not the kissy kind. Sugar, sugar, sugar. This way here, if you're making stuff, you know, sweetener, anything like that, anything that makes stuff taste better in an emergency situation, if you're eating bland food, trust me, you'll thank me for that one. Number 15, another biggie, white rice. White rice, if you store it correctly, and I would say store it in a Mylar bags inside of a bucket, you can get 30 years plus out of that also. Number 16, corn. Now, you want to try to buy whole corn and grind it down to make your own cornmeal. Um, if you make it right, you probably could do your own popcorn. And it has a shelf life of about 30 years. Number 17, we're getting there folks, maple syrup. Now, I'm not talking about your Aunt Jemima type of syrup here, all right? You're gonna have to spend the money. My suggestion would be go online, search maple syrup in Vermont. Vermont is well known as one of the top maple syrup producing states in the United States of America. You can't store Aunt Jemima. It won't last. You need pure maple syrup. Number 18, baking soda. Baking soda is another key baking ingredient that you have to have if you're going to you know, say make bread. Now, yes, there are some recipes where you don't put it in there, but it does make life a lot easier. And like salt and honey, it also has a ton of alternate uses that can get you through any type of situation that you may be in at this point in time. Number 19. We're almost there, folks. Come on, you can stay with me a little longer here. Bullion cubes, they have an unlimited shelf life. They're kind of like honey. And they come in different flavors. You can get chicken, you can get beef, and there's also a vegetable one for all you people out there that don't eat meat. So, you can buy some of those. They're really not very expensive at all. And this way here, you can have flavors of all different kinds for any of your meals that you may have to make in an emergency situation. Number 20, ta-da, we made it. Instant coffee. Instant coffee is freeze dried. That is why that it will last for 30 plus years. Now, if you are a avid coffee drinker like myself and probably like three quarters of an American people, you like your coffee. And in an emergency situation, you want to make sure that you can get that coffee. Yes, it is instant coffee, and it does have a different flavor. But in a pinch, it will do just fine. You will be able to have your coffee, 
and it'll make everybody around you a lot happier because you won't be ugly as a grizzly bear that just woke up out of its den. Having freeze-dried coffee would be in the top five for me. I don't know about you, but it'd be right up there. So, today has been 20 survival foods that will last for 20 years or more. And put in the comments below, what would you like or what do you have in your stockpile that can last for a very long time? Maybe something different than what I listed. This way here, all the new beginners out there, all the new people to the channel, to the community, might be able to learn something, get some new information, see what other people are saying. That's what we're all about, folks. We're all here to help each other out, to keep the boat alive, keep the boat floating, so we can get to the other side. And at this point in time in everybody's life, we all got to do something. We all have to stick together. We all have to put in our two cents worth. And that's why YouTube put that lovely comment section below. So I thank you for watching my videos. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe. Hit that little bell. This way here, you'll get notified every time that I do a video. And until next time. I will catch you all on the flip side.